come with me, Jake Turner, as I travel the back roads talking with your neighbors and crop experts about best practices in weed control in soybeans. All you need is a minute and Authority Minute. In this episode of Authority Minute, I'm still in Stromsburg, Nebraska, talking with Gail Stratman, FMC weed scientist, about how pre-emergence herbicides provide long-term value. So Gail, all of this really comes down to dollars and cents, trying to save money and make money. There are some growers I've talked to, and they completely understand the need for a pre, but they're considering using a reduced or a setup rate in order to save money in their weed management program. What do you think about that? Well, initially, a grower may think that a reduced rate can save him some money, but in the long run, all it may do is proliferate the problem. As you can see here, we've got pictures of some fields where we used a setup rate and initially the weed control was outstanding. But as we got later into the season, we start to see weeds start to come through the canopy. And so now those are the weeds that are going to produce the weed seed and we're just going to extend this problem later on. If we use a stronger rate of a pre-emergence herbicide, we extend that residual through the season, we prevent those weeds from going to seed and we maximize our yield potential. The easiest weed control is the one that never comes up. You know, we're looking at folks who maybe are trying to save some money in the short term, but like you say, the short term isn't what we're farming for, is it? We're looking at 10 years, 20 years down the road. We can take a very short-sighted uh, view of this and farm for just this season and might be able to save a little bit of money. But if we look long term, the best cost savings and the best return on investment we're going to have is to do the best job of controlling weeds. And that means using strong residual herbicides to control as many weeds as we can for as long as we can through the season. Rely less on total post herbicide programs and in that turn we get the maximum yield benefit and in the end we get the maximum return on the investment and the maximum return from our crop that we're trying to grow. So since we're talking about looking ahead, uh, what about our herbicide selection and crop rotation and any carryover we might encounter? Well, whenever we're selecting a herbicide program we should not only be aware of what crop we're going into this season, but also be aware of what crops we may be planting in the seasons to come. As long as we're using the right herbicide to address the weed issues that we have at the right rate on, for the soil type that we're treating, we should be able to avoid carryover issues going into the following seasons and have not only a successful weed management program this year, but have that fit into our plan for the following seasons. Well, Gail, thank you so much for your time and all the great information. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate it. Take care. That's it for our two-part series from Gail Stratman. Like Gail says, the easiest weed to control is one that doesn't come up. So I'm heading out to discover more about how to keep them from emerging with pre-emergent herbicides like Authority. See all the episodes at authorityminute.com. In the meantime, join me as I hit the road. All it takes is a minute and Authority Minute.